Welcome back to the FTM Fitness Series. If you're just tuning in, make sure to check out the previous videos where I covered everything you need to know to get started. Then day one of the split where I did a breakdown of the fitness plan and took you through our push workout in the gym. Then day two where we went through our pool workout in the gym and debunked some misinformation going around online about trans guys and certain back exercises. The links to all of those will be down in the description below in case you missed them. All right, this is the third and final day of our FTM beginner split leg day. Though there will be a bonus video for this particular split, that'll have our ab routine that you can either tack on the end of one of your workouts or do it as an optional fourth active rest day. But since it's not really our official day four, we're gonna consider this one the final day. Leg day is everyone's favorite day in the gym. I know you're all just itching to get to it, so I'm not gonna waste any time. We're gonna get right to the workout. Starting it off with a five minute warm up on the elliptical. You could also do this on a stair climber or on a treadmill at the max incline setting depending on what's available to you. But I like to make sure that I'm on something where I'm standing up and I can adjust the resistance. And this is just the warm up, all right? So take it easy. You don't wanna be huffing and puffing after this. Before I start lifting, I also like to do some body weight leg movements after the warm up, like squats and lunges, and I'll do some stretching kicks as well. But it's best to avoid static stretching before a workout. So anything where you'd like stretch and hold it for 30 seconds or more should be saved for after you lift. But because I'm so sedentary in my day-to-day -day life, I tend to be really stiff. I don't have a ton of mobility. So I do try to keep that in mind and do some, you know, dynamic stretching, uh, mobility movements, stuff like that before I lift. So get yourself moving, get warmed up, and then we'll kick off the workout with some squats, which will be our main compound movement for leg day. It's really important here to get the form down before loading yourself up with any heavy weight. So you want the bar across your shoulders, not resting on the bottom of your neck. Then you'll use your arms to stabilize the bar, but it shouldn't feel like you're lifting it with your arms. And you want to take a couple steps back from the rack, but make sure you're still over the metal guards. And you definitely need to be squatting on something that has these. So then you'll place your feet a bit wider than shoulder width apart with your toes slightly pointed out. And for the movement, you want to plant your feet, keep your chest up and your back straight, meaning you're not going to ever hunch over or arch your back. You just want it neutral throughout the whole movement so that as you come down into the squat, you're only bending at your knees and your hips. You wanna open up your hips and let your knees travel out and forward, but not out in front of your toes. You'll come down to parallel, then drive up through your heels, and you should feel it in your glutes, in your quads, as you push up and forward, returning to that top position. This is gonna be an awkward movement to try to get down at first, especially if you're new in the gym and you have a limited range of motion. It can feel very weird, like sometimes you feel like you're about to fall backwards but you can place a bench behind you and practice tapping your butt on it as you go down into the squat position to help you get used to the feeling of sitting down and back during the squat and this is another one that you should really be doing with a spotter for just general safety and to help you with the form and filming yourself practicing body weight squats at home is a great way to check your form because even if you know everything you're supposed to be doing you know it's a lot to think about and it feels weird to build up that muscle memory and, and get that movement down. So definitely do that and make sure you're comfortable with it before you go and load up with weight in the gym. And for this video, it actually took us over 10 takes to get these squatting clips because we were working with new camera equipment. Oh fuck. Try again. Gotta do it again. So by the end, you know, where the footage looks good and is usable, I had already done about 50 reps with 135. And you can really tell that my form is suffering. Like I should have just taken the weight off and done it with the bar so that I could demonstrate the proper form, but I wanted the consistency because I, I don't know. It's been a while since I filmed those, but uh, that's all right because I can actually use this uh, to point out some common squat mistakes. So first off, I'm not going down to parallel. This is called half repping and generally means you need to lower the weight or work on your mobility so you can comfortably perform the full range of motion. And then next you can see that my knees are moving forward past my toes. That's because my hips are closed off. So I probably need to get my feet out a bit wider, point my toes out more at least, and make sure I'm opening up my hips so that my knees travel out more rather than forward. So while squats can be tricky, don't let that deter you from doing them. These are the prime leg day workout and well worth putting the time and effort into learning. And if you don't have a spotter to help you out with free weight squats, there are lots of substitutes. There's a hack squat machine. You could do goblet squats with a dumbbell or Smith machine squats, but all those will have slight variations when it comes to form and how to do them. So just make sure that you Google those and know what you're doing before you try them. So for squats, we're gonna be doing three sets of five reps. 
And next up, we're doing some lunges. With a lunge, you wanna step forward and plant your front foot, bringing your back knee down almost to the floor, and then pressing up through your front heel, then stepping forward with your back leg to repeat the motion on the other side. So you can do these with just body weight, or you can carry some weights to add to the intensity. And for lunges, we're gonna do three sets of 10 reps. Then we're moving on to the leg press machine. This will be similar to the squat. You want your feet outside of shoulder width, toes pointed slightly out. You wanna keep your whole foot planted, bring that weight down, and then drive it up, pushing through your heels. And make sure you get your foot placement high enough on that platform so that your whole foot stays planted throughout the movement and your knees don't move past your toes. And for the leg press, we're gonna do three sets of 10 reps. Then we're going to finish up the workout with some calf raises. You want the ball of your foot on some sort of platform where your heels can descend below, getting a nice stretch in your calf and then push up and squeeze at the top. And all of this with a nice and controlled speed and motion. There are seated and standing calf raise machines. You can also do them on a leg press machine, or you could just hold a weight and stand on the edge of like any elevated platform. I've done some calf raises in some wild places. Stairs, curbs, your fucking mom's house. <laughs> I'm sorry. So for the calf raises, we're going to do three sets of 10 reps. We're going to wrap up the leg day with an extra spicy burnout, hop back on that elliptical, crank the resistance up, and try to go for five more minutes. It should feel like you're walking through mud, like your whole shit is gonna burn and it's fine if you can't go the whole five minutes. Just do what you can. I'm sure your legs are still gonna feel like jelly and you're gonna wanna die. And really that's the best we can hope for with leg day. And then you're done. Congratulations, you didn't skip leg day. Now with this being the final official day of our split, I would like to remind you that as a beginner, you should be able to make a mass gainer scoop amount of gains off of this split. So enjoy. And keep in mind that in order to continue making progress, you need to continue to challenge yourself. That means adding weight, adding reps, adding days in the gym, as your body adjusts. Like I said in the push day video, you can make a couple really easy modifications to this split to turn it into a full eight week program, but there may come a point where you hit a plateau and you've tried making all those adjustments and you still feel like you're not really making progress with this split. That means it's time to add in some exercises or just adopt a new split altogether. I'll be putting up the ab workout video next. And since I've had a ton of requests for home workouts, I've decided to do a modified version of this split uh, that's going to be entirely home workout based with little to no equipment needed. So all of that is on its way. Make sure you're subscribed and you got the notifications turned on so you can catch it when it drops. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to watch the others in the series. Leave a comment if there's anything else you want me to cover or talk about in a future video. But as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.